this is going to be the future spot. No. So the next thing is tasting. That's something that's going to be solved the long-standing issue in both Scalacy and Dotty that Okay. Yeah. Makes a difference. Uh, so tasty is going to create a huge breakthrough in what can be done in Scala, even separate compilation. Most Scala say that. So if you can, if you compare Scala. And some other languages, like Scala JS or Go, Scala works under assumption of separate compilation. It works, it provides you the possibility to just replace a jar in production, and that's a version of Great of your library, at least for the major versions. This has been limiting compiler developers for a long time on what they can do. We believe that Taste is going to solve this problem for us. It will allow us to both deliver compatibility for developers to make sure that we're not breaking your libraries uh, by up fixing some bugs in compiler. We don't need to be bug compatible with our previous minor versions. And at the same time, it creates new possibilities. We'll be able to optimize code in cross modules. So in Dotty, we're going to start with having a separate mode of compiler which is Dota Linker, which will optimize the libraries that you use for you and will optimize you for your libraries. Uh, inspiration came here comes from this uh, Scala Blitz, where optimizing the collections for a particular application allowed to get 20 times the speed up by eliminating boxing. By eliminating boxing, eliminating virtual dispatch, and optimizing the code inside compiler, knowing Scala specific stuff. Foxplot is really good in optimizing, Scala, in optimizing Java, but common Java patterns are not always similar to common Scala patterns. And that's why we need our own optimizer. We also have the Scala meta. It's going to, going to be the basis for tooling and the basis for meta programming that Eugene has been working a lot on. And we'll have several backends. We'll have Plotspot backend, as always, you'll be able to be for Java. We also will have Scala JS backend as the first citizen. Scala is not going to be the language built specifically for JVM anymore. We're going to have multiple backends. The other question is we're considering adding new simple, simpler collections. There's an open call by Martin on GitHub Wiki on, on uh, Dotty GitHub issues where he asked everybody who wants to participate and propose ideas for designing new collections. We want to have collections which are simpler. We want to have collections where if you have a junior starting and he looks at the signatures of the API, he doesn't need to understand what he can build from it. We want to have collections where if you implement a collection, then you don't need to go through the wrap hell because as far as I know, for if at least for me, the first time I tried to implement Scala collection, it took me two days to understand what am I doing wrong. And it took me two days more to understand how what's the right way to do it and why it's done this way. So I invite everybody who have strong opinions about how Scala collection should look like to participate. That's a moment for you to have your say. Oh, why do I have this picture here? This is some unrelated picture. Nothing new here. Uh, please ignore. Nothing's coming. Nothing's going to be announced as holidays. Nothing can lead to a Reddit. Nothing is integrated in the Dota code base. And Dennis is working on nothing. Okay. <laughs> 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 so the Dota status. Dota is open source. Dota bootstrap itself. It's some kind of indication of the level of quality, which doesn't actually say much, but the compiler of standard library actually does. So, Doty, when compiling itself, runs a little twice, around twice faster than compiling Scalacy. And we didn't try to make it faster by optimizing it by hand. We were just 
carefully choosing the design decisions. We have a lot of overheads laid around that we're aware of, that we're not eliminating now just because we don't have a need to. I have a strong feeling that if we want to get the most performance out of the other team, we'll be able to outperform Scala C by a factor of four or five. Dot is not ready for production use, obviously, yet. So we're working towards seeing what should be the correct evolution path for Dolly. We want to be as compatible as Scala C as we can, but we need to carefully decide what do we carry over from Scala C and what we don't. Currently, Doty as a language and the Doty, the, and Doty as compiler in, in the, is very similar in how it behaves with Scala C. This is a starting point for us to see how we want to evolve the language. We want to consider things like effects. We want to consider things like implicit functions. We want to consider simplifying how you write your everyday code. We want to make sure that your code is safer. When you say safer, that's a hard decision to make because if you have unsafe code, it's going to stop compiling. We need to see your code basis and see how much of it does it affect. We need, that's a moment when we want you to start participating. We want you to start looking how Dota performs on your code basis and start enabling strict modes, like start enabling the non Scala 2 compatible modes because it will show us how much influence does it do on the common Scala ecosystem. We're testing it on some projects that we can, but we have all, but we have clearly limited amount of people, and we can test it on your closed source projects and your info systems. So please do it for us. Okay. So the big, aside from what we're doing, there is a big question: Who's doing this? Well, obviously, there is one big guy who has been around since Scala. I would actually say that he was before Scala. He was before Final. That's Martin. He's a wonderful guy. He is really good at having the vision of the language, the long-term vision, and carefully picking the people who work with, and finding good projects which may not look nice now, but they have a wonderful future if you let them evolve. Uh, to, be the, to put a bit of background who Martin is, uh, who here started compiling, started learning programming languages by learning Pascal? Almost everybody. Pascal was developed by Nicolas Wirt. Nicolas Wirt is supervisor of Martin. So Martin, when he was doing his PhD, he was doing it under supervision of Nicolas Wirt. And if you remember, Nicolas was trying to build a language where you can build safe systems and where you can educate easily. I have a feeling that Martin is going the same way. He tries to simplify the way you do your everyday task make you more efficient as a developer, but still to allow you to go, go low level, to optimize stuff if you need. Okay, so Martin is supervising a whole laboratory in EPFL called LAM. We're doing research there. We're, try, we're stupid enough to try and do stuff that, that everybody seems impossible. There are multiple projects that arise from this laboratory to date what was impossible at the moment. That's miniboxing, that macros, that scala picking, and that's all. There is a lesser known laboratory in EPFL called ARA, where ARA stands for Automated Reasoning and Analysis. Actually, when I was saying that Doc is the third compiler, I was lying to you. There is a fourth compiler, even less known. There is a compiler called Neon, and it works entirely differently. It only compiles a program that it can prove correct. And it means that you need to write this program in a specific way where you will write a helper or a proof checker to make sure that it's going to infer the rules. Actually, it's not, currently, it's not only able to prove your program. If you have good enough specification, it, it can synthesize parts of it. So you're free to not write the implementation of a method, but you, you just specify what this method should do. What are the, its arguments? What, are its, what is its return type? And it will create some implementation. Though, because it generates some implementations, don't be surprised if it's exponential <laughs> in complexity. But you, you should be assured that it works correctly. Okay, we also have uh, TypeScript or Lightbank. That's, that's an entirely different perspective. While EPFL does research, which is long term, which can fail. 
Line band tries to deliver systems which are known not to fail, which are guaranteed not to fail. They try to sell you the guarantee that they're not going to fail in your production. They try to teach you how to build systems which are guaranteed not to fail. It means that they're doing a lot less project, a lot of projects that don't try to do as much as we try, but they spend 80% of the last 20% of the project, which needs, which is the stuff that you need to do to actually deliver, deliver a working system. There is also other parts of the community that we care a lot about. There's that level. Most of the guys who have their own vision of what Scala, Scala language should be, and they're building systems which make Scala a more fluent language, which show that Scala can be used by people with different origins, people with different visions. They make Scala more different, and they allow you to make a choice. They create the possibility of a choice. That's why they did it. And uh, type level guys have their own compiler. I have a feeling that the systems that you're trying to build now can be easily built, more easily built on .dotting. So you may consider. Okay, so there is one more player in the area, Scala Center. When I was showing you the previous companies, <laughs> I was intentionally trying to indicate to you why the companies are doing what they're doing. Obviously, type safe is trying to earn money. Read. EPFL tries to build publications to do fun stuff for research. Okay, but then let's say you have a project which isn't going to bring money now and not research intensive anymore. So PhDs aren't going to work on this because for them, it's just losing the time with their PhD. They're going to fail if they try to do it. Live event or live safe is not going to work on it because it's for them spending money. We need somebody to work on projects which are just good for community, but they don't provide profit of such things. We need something like Linux Foundation, which just does what needs to be done for the good of all of us. That's Scala Center. So Scala Center is technically a part of EPFL, but not part of our level. They're a separate unit. Um, John Pretty here is to represent Scala Center. They will be building the community. They will be building the new interactions between the Scala core teams, which have their own interests, which would like them, and they're going to organize all the future of Scala, Dotting, for the, for the best of all of us. And they're going to teach new generation of Scala developers. On Coursera, they're giving courses on parallel programming, they're giving courses on functional programming, and they're going to continue improving that. Okay, and of course, we have our awesome community. Scala wouldn't have been in the place where it is now if we didn't have awesome libraries like Reactive Mongo. If Reactive Mongo didn't exist, I wouldn't have been in Scala community because I could have kept used Scala for the project that I've been working on in industry. Play started the projects uh, which was outside of TypeSafe, and then it became that part of TypeSafe. And <coughs> I have a feeling that community of Scala is unique. Our community has a very high standard of what the system should do. So if you consider libraries in Python, most libraries there are simple. If you consider libraries in JavaScript, they have libraries just to pad events. <laughs> this would never work in Scala. For Scala, in order for a library to be used, it's not that it needs to have a complex thing that it's doing. Because people in Scala want to have fun by doing complex things. We have an entirely different of standard of what libraries should look like. We have type system that allows us to do complicated stuff. And that's great. We also have an ecosystem and community where people aren't afraid to build their own direction, to build their own vision. We have several groups of people. We have Scala Z, we have Shapeless, we have the Martin Steam, the compiler mainstream, and they're all building different visions. And that's great, because from this conflict that arise here, we're building something which is going to be awesome for everybody. Where everybody will have a choice. And everybody will decide whether it is going to go high level and build the prototype fast 
can deliver it fast. But then when he delivers the prototype, if he'll have a bottleneck somewhere, he can go to low level and optimize it by hand, as if he was writing in C or Java. So companies like Yandex, for example, it's common for them to write a prototype in Python, but then in order for it to hit production, we need to rewrite it in C for C++. In Scala, you can quickly develop a prototype in Ruby-style, Python-style Scala, and then if you need performance, well, you go to Java or C-style Scala, and you have a choice here. Okay, so the main thing here that builds Scala as a community is contributions. Contributions as new libraries, contributions to standard library. We want to know how do you want to use it in the future. We want to know if it fulfills your desires. We also want to help you to understand how compiler works, why it works this way, and maybe we'll have new people join the compiler team. Docker is a lot easier to understand than Scala. Recently, Martin has been publishing Docker, started publishing documents on internal Docker design and dot foundations. They may be of interest to some of you. And of course, a compiler isn't all today. If there are languages which have compiler that nobody uses, well, because in order to use language in a big team, well, you need IDE. You need to be efficient. You need to have good debugger support. You need to have good deployment support. You need to have good modularization projects. You need to have all kinds of tools. You need to have refactorings. And that's a place where actual people working in the industry know a lot better what do they need. Because compiler developers working on a specific code base which isn't like most projects. It's very highly coupled data code base where refactorings are very uncommon because if you're doing something wrong, you're going to feel it soon. And if you try to refactor it, it can, after you did a lot of stuff wrong, cancel each other twice. So if you do two things wrong, they can cancel each other. Such a refactoring can take almost forever. If you consider, for example, how Firefox was developed from Netscape Navigator, when they started refactoring it, and Netscape died, <laughs> uh, and some browsers and operating systems, some compilers are uh, alike each other. They're very unlike normal software that people are developing. Okay, so thank you for following my presentation, and please ask questions. Thank you. For thank you. <laughs> yes, please. What is expected the daytime of the day of the GA and the So. When you say GA, if you mean global availability, Doty is available since two years ago. No, but production. Uh, so speaking about production, ready is not clear. Now we're trying to understand what is going to be the future of Scala as a language. If we decide that future Scala isn't going to change at all, it's going to be soon. But we want to create new advances. Uh, we want to. I mean, if you were able to know the function that you're calling is pure, the compiler was able to optimize because of this, that's awesome. But this needs careful design, and it will take time. If you want to simplify the way you write your code, because, for example, by using implicit functions, we need to work out all the details of formal calculi. We need to work out all the details of implementation. We need to check that it plays well with all the features of the language. So, let me give you an example. Uh, one of the features that isn't going to be supported by Doty is there is a wonderful trait called delay in it, in Scala, which is a bunch of magic. This isn't a trait that's behaving as normal traits. Actually, if you're extending something which extends delay in it, if you write code inside, or you, you define a field, you're not defining a field. And you're, def you're not defining methods. The, thing, the stuff that you write inside this class aren't members, formally. In order for it to look like it worked, it's a huge amount of hackery that inside compiler we have a hard time maintaining and we have a hard time understanding. And there were multiple tries to make it explained to outside community and none of this succeeded. We want to not build new systems and new technologies that we're going to abandon in 10 years from now. That's why we have DOS. 
That's why we have Doty, which has a very strong self-validation system. Thank you for the question, Yes, please. Is the applicable on the is job applicable on the for Scala or uh, can it be applied also to find other languages? Does it hurt to the syntax of the language or can we uh, have the possibility of finding our own? Okay, the question was uh, is dot is Scala specific, so does it hard code the Scala as a language or can it be used for other languages? <laughs> so first of all, Scala is quite an expressive language. I've seen a lot of languages being expressed as a DSL in Scala. I've seen basic being expressed as DSL in Scala. You can write a library in Scala, which just provides you basic syntax. You can write basic in Scala. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing is Dot inside has this state scheme, which is kind of a serialization format, which is which is, which is the more general than the format of uh, Dot. So you can have other languages compiled in this format, which isn't, it doesn't include Scala syntax. It includes the notion of control flow, it includes the notion of types. I mean, it will be harder to compile untyped language in it, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you can compile languages like Kotlin in it or Java, but somebody needs to do it. And it may be a fun project to try out. David, was, was the question about Dotty or Dot? Because there's a different answer for Dot. Was it a question about Dot or Dot? Yeah. Dot. Dot. Oh, sorry, then I mean, it's, 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 it's the question. I assume that you're asking about Dotty. No, they are some kind of the connected things. Okay. I wanted to know whether we can use the calculus itself. Yeah. So calculus itself, as stands now, is actually the structure of some typing system. It's very general. I mean, it, it called it has color. It, it, it codes Scala, which has no male subtyping system. Uh, it's not tired to Scala as a language, and you can always try to try and build it. And you can both try to build verification system. For example, I know people are trying to build systems which track mutability. So, for example, if you have a reference, a mutable reference, you want to make sure that by following this mutable reference. You can find a mutable field inside and mutate it. So if you capture something which looks like immutable, it's actually is immutable. Or you can build proof systems on it, and you can build new languages. Yeah. Yes, please. So uh, I was wondering what language features that are not present in Scala they are under consideration. I know that there's intersection and union types, but that's like a famous example. Mm -hmm. Are there any other uh, interesting features? So, there's, the question was, what are the features which are being considered for Dolly? So, there are two kinds of features here. Some features are implemented. They're not just considered. They're implemented and we're playing with them, trying them out. The commonly known examples are intersection and union types. And I like them because it means I don't have, need to have enums anymore. That's the main use case for me. Uh, we also have singleton types, which originate from inspiration from type level compiler. And we have been using them for quite a lot. There are bugs that we're aware of, and we're thinking how to fix them. So union type, uh, the singleton types aren't, I would say, that the most non ready part for production of Dolly compiler. And there are a lot of open questions how would you implement some parts of them without slowing compiler by factor of hundreds as soon as they appear in types. We're working on it. We're working hard on it. Uh, some options which are far from, 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 far from now, but we want to try them out, are effect systems. When you know what the function does, does it throw? Is it going to mutate global state? If it, maybe if it mutates global state, what kind of global state it mutates? That's one thing. The other is implicit functions. We have been also considering some changes of <coughs> how higher kind of text works. For example, we have some uh, prototypes which allow many examples of the higher kind of unification issue to pass, though it imposes some restrictions, which may be good or not, so we're still considering. Uh, what else? We have new kinds of, also aside from the changes in the language itself, we have changes in, we can say, you can say the behavior of the language. Lazy vowels in Dotty behave differently. 
they don't introduce that much. Which I would say is a good thing. <laughs> and as a plus, they're actually classical, even if you don't write code is going to introduce that box. But to be honest, they generate quite a bit more of code. So they generate, let's say, 20% more code, though which runs faster. So if you have a single credit application which happens to require a small build size, I would say the build of just is better. For everything else, the new one is good. Also, we have new technologies which are made available by this. So, I have students on my supervision working on some new ideas like auto collections. So, instead of saying, well, so, Scala has a huge amount of collections. Even if you consider sequential collections, we have like 15 collections that out of those, normally people know only five. For remaining 10, they're very specific, they're supposed to be used in very specific cases. And the problem with them is if you start using them, so let's say you, you check that you really need this collection. You really check that you really need a specialized or unrolled this buffer of editors. But then your software evolves. And two years pass, and the assumptions under which you chose these collections are now wrong. You made a wrong choice of your collection, and while well, you're in big code base, everybody is afraid to touch it. Some guy made a very specific choice of which collection to use. And maybe he's not working here anymore at all. And it still works, I better not touch it. So the idea is you don't say what specific collection you're interested in. You're interested, you say what behavior you want from collection. And then by using KST, by using link time optimization, by using linker, compiler gives you the best collection for this use case. If your code base evolves and use case changes, it will change the collection that it will give you. So I would say that that's choosing collections this way is not going to be as optimal at every particular moment as choosing them by hand. This system is not going to be smarter than the collection library developer, but it's going to be easier to use in the code bases. And even more, let's say that you're developing a library. The library needs to return a collection. It doesn't know how you're going to use this collection. So you're going for some conservative assumptions, you're choosing the most default collection possible, and then you're almost underperforming if you knew the collection, okay, the kind of collection you'd better return. This, this optimizer is going to also do it across libraries. So library order does that. Okay, I'm returning a lazy immutable sequence. And then the compiler sees how you're going to use this like this uh, collection you by a library, is going to provide you the best one for your particular instance. We have multiple projects like this in works. For example, one other student of mine is working on eliminating, uh, let's say, duplicate codes, calls. So let's say if you're converting something by using the conversion twice, it can cost you. You're calling functions several times, and you're very likely to not get side effect there. So if you have five encoded functions, which calling them twice it creates the same result as calling them once, you can actually replace them, the second call by the first one. But we have a lot of stuff that we're trying here. Some of this may end up being in Scala. Some of this may end up being in Dolly. And depending on how aggressive we would be about adding new features and trying them out, it's hard to say what's going to be the time. Thank you for one question. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, what is the simplest way to um, try Dolphin? I mean, compile some code. And the second question is: uh, Do you have any tool like Webflow or something like this? Two wonderful questions. The first one: How do you try out Dolphin? There is an SBT plugin that does some black magic and replaces Galaxy by Dolphin. There are some problems with it, to be honest. And the main problem is uh, Dottie currently is a research state. The artifacts which are created by Dottie currently can be consumed by Scalacy. Even more, they break some of the assumptions of Scalacy. And it's not obvious why. And it will take quite a long time for us to understand why, because Scalacy is all basic context. So in short, if you build a library by Dottie, and you ship it on Maven, and Scalacy sees it, 
is going to die in ridiculous way with some null pointer exceptions. So in order to try Dolly, there's an SBT plugin made by uh, Geomarkers <laughs> that you just add several lines to your build file and you try it. One more thing, Dolly has an option minus line for Scala 2. I would assume that you want to try it to start with it. The main reason is if you don't, Dolly is quite prescriptive about what it allows. For example, pattern matching is known to be unsound in Scala for many use cases. Uh, for I, I, I'm yet to see a code base where there's more than 20,000 lines of code in Scala that doesn't use this unsoundness. Just by accident. So if you try Dotty on it, Dotty will start complaining about your pattern matches because they're actually unsound. If you're just trying out, it's, you're, I'm not sure if you're willing to consider rewriting them and getting to why they're unsound. So we have an option which is backwards compatible with some box of scans or your convenience of migration. And the second question was if we have some tool like REPL. Yes, Dotty has a REPL, which is a lot simpler than Scala C1. For example, it doesn't have a power mode, so it, it would allow you to dive in internals of compiler. And we're open for contributions here. The well, REPL is very basic. It supports GLine. It doesn't support colors. And that's a wonderful thing for starting to contribute in it. Yeah, so. More questions? Yes, John, please. So, this other thing you could have mentioned in response to uh, Tomo's question um, unification of type members and type parameters, okay. which is being considered. Okay, so there is a small internal detail, <laughs> which currently is just internal detail, but one day we may consider exposing it out. Uh, in Scala C, <laughs> there is a huge difference between what is a type argument and what is a type member. They work differently, they support different stuff, they're kind of interchangeable, but actually not if you try to practice. In Doty, Doty internals more or less don't know about type parameters. They only work on type members. Type parameters are just a specific kind of type member, no magic thing. Actually, it allows wonderful things, which we're considering added to language, but we'll just we'll still play with them. For example, we have named parameters in oh, methods, so we can specify that you're proposing the you writing parameters in different order than the method was supported to by just writing the name of the parameter equals. So let's say if you have method that takes an A and a B, you can say I'm passing you B colon value. Uh, B equals value and A equals value. You change the order of your arguments. Actually, using internals of Doty, now we can support named type parameters, which is an awesome feature if you're developing some complicated library, or if you have multiple type arguments, and you have a hard time understanding why are they in this order. And even more, if some other people have different understanding of what should be the order of those arguments. So there are multiple ways how this can be exposed to users. And we're yet deciding which ones are going to be great features and which ones aren't going to break existing code. Yeah. Okay. More questions? Yes, please. Uh, considering the fact that the Scala is evolving uh, so fast and adding new features, uh, almost monthly. Do you consider doing some targeting, let's say like that, for the enterprise? Sorry, for what? For enterprise. Okay. There is required to have vulnerability for years rather than some research in things. So the question was, given that Scala is evolving in that fast, are we considering having some enterprise versions releases with some lifetime or so? Dotty currently is a research project. For Dotty, we're considering considering it. So if you want stability, Scala C had done a great amount of work in making them stable. For Dotty, we're not yet at the moment when we want to make a promise of stability. 
we are building a system so we're going to make to build this promise of stability on like tasty but uh, when you're an, a real enterprise you actually want somebody to provide you a support if you're something something stops working you need some somebody to react when you pass so you actually want a corporation behind it and I would say you need type two so why not? <laughs> I actually like the previous name more. Yeah. This was was safer. Okay. <laughs> Questions? Okay. Yes, please? Uh, how do you think you would eliminate the number of skull particles? Okay. The question is whether dot would eliminate the number of skull particles. So, as to start, as far as I know, I'm not very promising, but they may be a talk aiming at this question at Scala World. And yes, Scala World is a wonderful conference. I would advise you to go back. If, if, if you are the two push conference to go for, Scala World is awesome. Uh, okay, so, uh, puzzlers. There are different kinds of puzzlers. Some puzzlers originate from language. Like many puzzlers which originate from delay data. Some puzzlers originate from library design. For example, the puzzlers use set. But you have a headline on it. If you have more brackets, then you're actually checking for some. You're checking for it. Uh, some puzzlers originate from users <coughs> having or developers having assumptions about the language which aren't the same as somebody who wrote this back has. And it's all, not always clear who's wrong here. Currently, Doty tries to be compatible with Skeleton. It means that most puzzlers are there for now to stay for your amusement and for compatibility. Because, I mean, I'm coming for a more or less enterprise world. I've seen systems only work because of bugs. And if you start eliminating bugs, they will stop working. Uh, and we're trying to be very careful about introducing new bugs and even more about eliminating existing bugs. <laughs> because I mean, we want to eliminate them one day, of course. But before we eliminate them, we need to know what's the cost of it. And not only cost for us, but cost for our community. And that's why that's a wonderful moment for people to get involved in Ori. Because maybe there is some wonderful scala feature like macros that you rely on. And then you better know your use cases. You better make you to know your use cases because in a scala dose. Uh, so there are features which at the moment we know are, are, are very unlikely to be supported by that like scala macros. Because scala macros expose internal API of scala C compiler where we have different internal API. If we try to expose the same API, we need to re-implement Scala-C. And it's not likely to be happening. Also, previous macros create a huge amount of problems. And Eugene has new design in mind. And as far as I know, they're going to be a talk today about, or tomorrow about Scala Meta. Yeah, so you know, about okay, not about macros. Okay. I guess about tooling. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, most puzzlers are there to stay. Most puzzlers that I've seen actually originate from libraries or from people not being aware of some language features. Uh, people not being aware that when you define variables, the syntax when you define variables supports sports pepper matching. And then you get, you're thinking that you're just defining variables, but you're pattern matching and stuff, and that it can fail as known by pattern matching does. So most puzzlers I would expect are there to stay. Some of them are, are going to go away. It's very hard in terms of source compatibility question. If we the advantage of tasty actually is that up, most of the puzzlers come from early compilation pipeline from type checking from libraries and stuff. Actually we have technology now to try and make sure that there are puzzler compatible versions and puzzler non-compatible versions 
and they connect on phase scale up. And then that they, they will be able to coexist as language using the ecosystem of phasing. But that's all a speculation. It's what can be tried. And we're having fun trying those options as researchers. Thank you for the question. Yes, please. You, you mentioned something about the back, the back end might be JVM or JS. Yeah, and that was one more picture. Uh, <laughs> it, had, it had some scratches on the metal, you know? You didn't see it. But you didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was some, you know, some scratches on the slide. Yes, please. Can you see the substitute the scholar C in the future, or it will be the analog of the compiler? So, first of all, dot E. So the question is, can Gauti substitute Scala C in the future, or it will be an L, or it will be, I guess, a separate compiler or something? So for now, Gauti doesn't make you a promise about how long it's going to be lifetime of every particular revision of the language that Gauti compiles. It's very similar to Scala, but subtle details were changing them from here and there from time to time. So. I believe that for quite some time those will coexist. And Doty is a project which actually can be compiled by both Scala C and Doty. So you can have projects which exist in both, and you try both, and you see what works better for you. For me, I believe that Doty has killer features that would make me convinced to try it in some kinds of projects. So for example, this length time optimization. It can, for some applications, which for example, previously were creating a lot of garbage due to boxing, which had a lot of virtual dispatch, uh, this can make a big difference. So if you previously wanted to have smart specialization of smart mini boxing, and you didn't find those, dot T <coughs> seems to be going to deliver this. But uh, from the question of whether dot T would replace color C, it's yet to be seen. Because, I mean, there are, there is stuff which clearly is not going to be supported by Don. And there are code bases which will have a lot of lifetime longer than three years from now. And it means that from three, in three years from now, there needs to be a compiler which would support those features. Well, we have an obvious one, Scala C. And there are systems which heavily rely on it, and there are some code bases which for them, migration, even a minor one, is a big question. Then let's say you have a code base, which you're just in maintenance mode. But you need somebody to support your code base in case something wrongs, in case something breaks. You can hire a type staples, hire contractors for that. They know their stuff, and they're going to fix something wrong, if something breaks. But then why would you migrate to dot if it just works? Yes, please. Okay. So the question was, who we report some interesting features from Dotty to Scala C? So to start off, some interesting features are being unsure reported is the right way. I would say that they were first implemented in Dotty, then Scala C devs had looked at our implementation and had made their their version of this kind of thing. To show you several examples, Java 8 has default methods. And having default methods can simplify a lot of mixing composition, which will lead to Scala classes being substantially smaller. So Dotty built by Dotty is 8 megabyte size. Dotty built by Scala C is 14 megabytes size. And the main reason here is actually makes sense because actually the size of bytecode that Dottie produces normally is bigger. Simply because we didn't try this. We didn't try to add save here and there a bit. Which can be done like Or by some other tool like Optimize or Winker or something that not phrases don't need to consider this. So uh, some features are being developed by us in tight cooperation. The other way to answer this question, I can answer the you question. When you mean you, there are several different groups of people. There are type like Bent employees, 
which work on scalacy, and which work on stability. And there are EPFL researchers which work on stuff which industry may think is impossible. And we have different interests. And I mean, there may be some people who have been working on DOT, they will be graduated and be then working on scholarship or something, or the opposite way around. Type safe may decide to have some people work on DOT, but that's open question for now. Or too early to tell. What I can definitely say is that Scalacy is going to be maintained for quite a long time. DOT is going to be evolving. And we have really good people behind those compilers speaking with each other. And we're not going to change the stuff which is going to break their code. We're not going to change the signature of Brinton. We're not going to stop supporting stuff which was default in the previous version that everybody uses. Uh, we're not going to go the final. <coughs> Yes, yes. And a very uh, like practical question. So, uh, like, I have a project that depends on like a bunch of libraries. Yeah. Uh, can I use Dotty on it, or do I need to cross compile all the libraries to Dotty? Mm -hmm. So the question was, if you have a project that depends on various libraries, parts of the ecosystem and stuff, mm -hmm. how would you try? Can you try Dotty on it, or do you need to actually compile all your library dependencies as you do for Scala.js? Yes. So the short story is. Doty is able to read Scala signatures. Doty is able to consume files coming from Scala. That's a short story. The long story, Doty isn't bug compatible. There are some details of Scala, how Scala works, for example, it handles names. Some of this naming is irreversible, and this naming has a meaning. And so we're trying to make sense of it, but in some cases, it's hard. In some cases, the format that Scala C uses, which is, for example, unspecified and like tasty, it's ambiguous. So, what Scala C saved can, can be treated in a separate way, several ways. And if you try to go one way or the other, you may fail, or you may have a spurious failure that you tried and it's, it. Should, it looks like that's a path that you should try, but that's not. And also, you can actually, because Scala C has its own assumptions about how stuff works, you can start, for example, reading inner classes, which is never going to, never supposed to happen, or then you're dying. So, in short, Doty, built by Doty, if you build it normally, uses Scala C build standard library. So, it means that, at least for these complicated code bases, you can have Project built by Doty not need to be built to have its dependencies rebuilt. And actually, to be honest, uh, Doty depends on fork of Scala compiler because there was an idea to integrate our arguments on backend, which is still an open question whether we want to do it because it's a wonderful thing from ideology, but then Scala C when doing changes needs to consider Doty, Doty when doing changes needs to consider Scala C, so much hassle maybe synchronizing. From time to time, this is here. So, in short, it's, it's expected to work. If it fails, please report. <laughs> we would either better know when it fails and better know why it fails, or maybe we'll be able, even able to fix it by. I mean, Scala C is a big machine. Sometimes it's not clear why it works. And many bugs in Scala C are fixed by looking at symptoms. <coughs> Here we're having Doty, which where we try to not fix symptoms, look at symptoms at Scala C. Here we need to go back to the approach for symptoms. I'm trying to make it. Thank you for a wonderful question. Yes, please. Uh, you said that. Uh, for Scala C, uh, there's been a lot of hacker in the internals, right? Yeah. So, uh, do you have uh, uh, an intention to avoid this hacker at all in Dota? Okay. So the question was, uh, in Scala C, there was a lot of hacker in internals, 
then we have an intention to, to avoid this at all. So first of all, in Dotty, we have something called white check, which also exists in Scalsy, but unlike in Scalsy, it breaks. And it's enabled by default. And what it is, is, so that's a system which up, is invoked after any phase, if you get in your checking mode, where there is wonderful thing that comes and verifies all most of the internal structures of the compiler. It verifies that the compiler is in correct state, reproducible state, that if you let's say throw away all the types and retype check stuff, the types stay the same. You can still retype check it. And this means that a lot of hacks which were a way to develop features in Dory or in Scalacy are simply impossible in So let's say for example pattern matcher was making references to non-existent symbols, which were to be created later. What it meant is if you're trying to have a look at the tree, you have preferences to which don't make sense. If you formally analyze a tree, this tree is erroneous from the point of view of Scala because it refers to non-existent stuff. Also, it has some funny box when it's referred to existing stuff, but it's referred to even different type. All of this is not going to work in Dolly. If you even try to implement this, the Dolly will yell at you. And we're checking that all this never happens all about compiling Dolly, Scala library, and so on. But in Dolly, we have new kinds of hackery to build. We have new foundations which allow stuff which was impossible previously. For example, uh, I had a try somewhere near New Year to parallelize TypeRiver. I had a try in, in Dodge to parallelize TypeRiver. Surprisingly, it wasn't that complicated as people expected it to be. So in Dodge, because we have better foundations, a lot of things that previously were thought impossible can be done simply. Yeah. I mean, if you try, try to ask people why was it possible back then, they try to explain it on why it failed. And the more or less answer is the stuff that we were building on was wrong. Your assumptions were wrong. You needed to assume something that you can check. In Dotty, well, you check everything that we need to assume. And if you have some assumptions that you're building on, you just implement what? Why check? Again, yeah, let me just rephrase it because uh, Motivation behind the question was that uh, when and if uh, Dodi becomes stable enough to try to persuade people to get some business projects in it and to do some serious stuff in it, not just some research. There will be a serious question whether to migrate. And uh, assume, uh, so the knowledge that there is no hackery at all in Dodi would be a serious motivation to persuade people to migrate. Okay. And basically, so, sorry, let me just uh, finish. And basically, so, do you have a postulate that uh, you will uh, not take uh, some new feature if it requires some hacker? Or you will make some hacker in order to make that the feature rich? Uh, I'm trying to understand the question. So, when you mean hacker, you mean there is a feature in the that it does I mean, I mean something that can be uh, proven <coughs> semantically, as uh, you, you say. Because, as I understand, uh, there are many things that uh, can be proven mathematically uh, in currently scholarship. Yeah. You try to avoid them. So, will that be a postulate, or uh, in order to get uh, some new features in the Dota, at some point you can still uh, do some hacks in a new compiler? Okay, so the question was let's start, let's say, by the question. So, given that Dota has a standard for verifying the ideas that are incorporated into Dotty by Dot. Okay. If we have some feature that people desperately need, either in terms of migration or in terms of it's very practical, uh, would we consider such a feature if it's hard to prove it or even possible to prove it? Yeah. It's hard to answer this question because it would depend on the feature and how how much is it needed. Because I mean, there are features in Scala, and I mean, when I say that Dot is proven. Dot is a lot simpler system. And there are open questions in Dot which we're addressing now. For example, if you have dependent types on lazy loss, like a contra examples that show that it's unsound. And there is no much difference here between Dot and Dot. Dot has a strict mode which disallows this, but it does it very aggressively, and we're not running it because we're aligned 
policy. So we're trying to do research here, but in the meantime, we made a compromise to say, okay, if you're using this feature, you better know what you're doing. We're not keeping this a secret or something. There is open issue where there is a huge discussion. We're trying to get more people interested in those questions by some simply submitting papers or conferences that say, guys, we have this huge feature, which is a problem. So let's, let's make all the research world corroborate and try to fix it. We're trying to make sure that other languages, other communities are aware of our status. And if they know how to fix stuff, maybe even if they didn't publish it or something, they would communicate it to us. I have a publication so by the So I guess we're hitting the time limit. So I guess any last question? Is there a question? Yes, please? Yes. Okay, so the question was, is dot row last time automated proven system? Yes. Uh, also, so there are the list of people who are shown, they actually have several formulations of dots in different proof systems. Uh, and they're trying to well Form, different people trying to formulate it by their own. By their own. So there's a formulation by Nada. There's a formulation by Sandra. Okay. Sandra, and they do it in different proof systems. Yeah. So thank you for your time, and have a great conference. <laughs>